braking. It's something we all do, but we'd all probably love to do a little bit less, just to gain those extra seconds on the trails. The pros seem to make it look effortless, but I think it's often something overlooked by a lot of riders. Let's take a little look at a few tips and tricks that we can do to improve our braking, both control and gain a little speed here or there. Let's start with types of brakes. There's quite a few out there to choose from, but you'll either get a mechanical brake or a hydraulic brake. A mechanical is going to be cable operated, while a hydraulic brake is going to be run with fluid inside it. Now, there's four pot and two pot brakes. Neither are better than the other. Each both offer their uh, own benefits, pluses and minuses sort of thing. You can see on my bike here, I'm running the Shimano XT four pot brakes. Now, what that means is there's four pistons in there. Two and two, pushing from either side. A four pot will generally give you more power, but can be a bit heavier and sometimes a little grabby when not set up right. On a downhill bike, you're often gonna find a four pot brake combined with a larger rotor. That's to give them the most power and most braking that they can possibly get for the steeper, gnarlier trails that they're riding. On a lot of trail bikes these days, you'll find generally a two pot brake, sometimes a four pot up front, or like this one, like I said, I've got a four pot front and rear. There's no right or wrong answer as to what brakes to use for what application, but some are better suited than others. Check out Neil and Blake here. Have a look at their body position. You'll notice under hard braking, their weight is thrown forwards onto their arms. So they really want to keep working that upper body to stay strong and prevent from being sent too far forwards, unweighting the rear wheel, which can be problematic when the trail gets steeper. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> now, in most cases, you'll want your weight just behind the center of the bike. So your hips and butt are just behind the saddle. Arms slightly bent and shoulders and hips should all be in line. You don't want to get all twisted up and put yourself all out of shape. Now control. You'll notice all the pros, they just seem to have exceptional braking control. And that's generally from years of experience and just practicing and riding and riding and riding. Often they're not with some uh, pretty unfortunate consequences, but you learn these things the hard way and you generally improve from them. Simple ways to practice your braking control are find a section you might be familiar with, something like what we've got here where we've got a a fairly good section running into a nice tight left-hander. Practice that section over and over again. You can mix things up by changing your speed you come in at, entrance speed, exit speed, line choice. All these little changes are gonna make you use the brakes differently and therefore get to grips with sort of how it reacts in different situations. That was better. Now try not to be too grabby on the brakes, especially in wet conditions. This will cause you to throw your body weight around the bike all unevenly, possibly losing grip. It'll also scrub more speed than what you need for that section, costing you valuable time. So being able to read the ground and the surface conditions ahead are gonna greatly change how you pull those brakes. The wetter and looser it is, the smoother you're gonna to wanna to be. As as soon as you start locking up them wheels, they're gonna go and it's pretty tricky to bring it back. Okay, so secondly, how steep the trail is is also gonna alter which brake you use more. On a couple of steep turns like we've got here, you're gonna find yourself using the front brake to scrub speed, but the back brake to sort of lock up and help change direction. Oh. Tires, now a massive subject in themselves, but matching up the right tires with the right surface conditions that we've just spoke about, can really affect your braking. Having a nice mud tire or sort of a more spiky, aggressive tire like my Vittoria motors that we've got on here are really gonna dig into muddy conditions. And what that'll do for your braking is give you more traction, more confidence, and more stability. Running a dry tire like the Vittoria Martellos in sort of drier conditions or bike park conditions like what we're in here at Rogate are really gonna give you much more rolling speed uh, and when you're braking, they're going to be much more predictable. Again, giving you much more confidence. Now I know how I like my brakes. I always have them set at 38 degrees, no matter what bike. It's just how I like them. Some people will set them a little flatter. Some people will set them a little steeper. It really can depend on personal preference and 
what kind of terrain you're riding. But it's something worth playing around with to get it nice and comfortable. Finally, ideally you should be using just one finger on the brake. A lot of modern brakes are powerful enough for this now, so it's really something you should try and get used to. You wanna have your index finger placed roughly towards the end of the lever, that'll give you the most leverage and also the most control on the brake. Have a little play with where you space your levers along the bar and how far away they are from the grip. This will get it in the most comfiest position for that index finger to sit nicely on there. Right, thank you for tuning in. I hope you picked up some great pro raking tips from this video. If you've got any more, let us know in the comments. And if you wanna watch more GMBN, click down here. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also hit subscribe.